how should it be? My sister Betty. There we are. Once spoke to me of the loss of innocence. She didn't ever want to be the one who took someone's innocence. She didn't ever want to be the one to tell a kid there is no Santa Claus. At about that same time, my daughter Jordan was 15 years old. She'd been fairly well protected for her whole life. Her innocence had been leaking away at a reasonable rate. Her interest in boys was only just beginning, though I'm sure she heard some relatively advanced stories from kids at school. What is the best way for a child to lose their innocence? There are certain basics that a parent can relate to a child, but there is no way to fully prepare anyone for the loss of their innocence. We laugh at people who have been kept in innocence too long. We call them naive. Innocence will be lost by the simple act of opening one's eyes to the world. It's great when our eyes are opened by a poet or a playwright. My mom always suggested talking to a priest. The confessional was the only type of therapy she was ever exposed to. Only people with problems go to a therapist. I see that, as, that statement as self-inflicted naivete. I had my first kiss as a fairly new freshman in high school. The second girl that I kissed kissed much longer. This was progress. My first long-lasting love began in my junior year. I was 16. My girlfriend was 14. My daughter was 15. I'm sure you can see why my radar was so sensitive. I was wondering when that spark was going to ignite for her. My innocence was in the offing. The day Jordan was born, I began preparing myself for that moment, picturing some unsavory character pulling up in a van and honking the horn. He's dead meat. But Jordan is kind of ridiculously smart. She's that quiet kid who studies people. From earliest childhood, she would intensely scrutinize any new face she met. She picks and chooses who she wants to befriend or give the time of day. I expected she would be fairly picky when it came to giving up her innocence. Love isn't often an unexpected thing. Many people are taken by surprise. One can never fully prepare for that, other than to acknowledge in advance that it's a possibility. I just did that, didn't I? But this innocence thing, this really has me stuck. One of the very few times that I recall Jordan crying, deeply sobbing, was when we told her about the Easter Bunny, that we are it. The Easter Bunny wasn't innocence, it was a lie that her mother and I had carefully crafted to fool Jordan, to give her the childhood experience that we had cherished from our own younger days. We both had those magical Easter mornings finding eggs, most of which we had colored ourselves, that had been placed by this giant bunny that my imagination had painted in vivid colors. We were involved, caring parents who wanted a swing set out back and all of the magic of childhood for this intensely precious entity that who we had brought into the world. Were we constructing Jordan's innocence? We didn't present the Easter Bunny as a childhood game, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. It wasn't just something we believed in, it was a fact. We presented it as fact. We gave it to her like a birthday cake. I know it's too much sugar, but go ahead, it's your right as a child to be pampered and spoiled. I really hate that term, children spoiled, like lettuce or apricots. 
once they're spoiled, do we just throw them away or, or, or use them as compost for next season's crop? A child cannot be given too much attention. Innocence is not something that we can control or dictate. I believe we place too great a value on innocence, just like the Catholic Church has placed too great a value on virginity. To discredit sex to the point that the birth of Jesus didn't require it? I find this concept to be diabolically cruel. Most of the world's cultures have inflated the value of virginity to the point where losing it in any but the locally prescribed method is tantamount to falling from heaven to hell. This all but eliminates what I find to be, or I think is the most beautiful way of losing one's innocence. The ideal, as I see it, is for two people to discover one another and to have the yearning grow for each to seek fulfillment in the other. Simply that. No predetermined promises of fidelity. How can anyone in that moment know that this will be forever? So I wrote everything you've heard so far in this piece in 2009. Jordan was indeed. 15 years old. I, I, I didn't know how to put a button on the end of it then. I do now. You see, Jordan is now on the verge of turning 30. And she and Will have worked out their lives together in the very way I described as my ideal. They handed each other their innocence on January 11, 2020. They pledged their troth to one another. And Susan and I got to watch, along with a select few other family and friends. I don't believe in happily ever after, nor the Easter Bunny. I did once upon a time, but not anymore. Jordan and Will got married in an absolutely fairy tale setting. Colgate University is where they met, and they returned to Colgate regularly, revisiting the scene of their sublime. I'm grateful for every moment that they can share with me. I relish just watching them getting along. And now they've got Frankie as well. They are as close to the perfect family as I can imagine. I am very grateful to you for allowing me to share these moments of fatherly pride.